Welcome to Monday, Thursday worship at Lafayette Presbyterian Church and a warm welcome to all who are visiting, who are guests, who are watching virtually. We consider you part of the worshiping family of God today. It is a blessing for us to gather at the table of the Lord. All who trust in him are invited to partake. This is, in a sense, a recreation of the Last Supper. That's why you might be puzzled seeing communion begin the worship service. This evening's tenebrae service, where the lights diminish throughout worship, mirrors Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper, and then as they walked and sang toward the Garden of Gethsemane and beyond. Please note, as we worship, the symbolism of falling away. The elders and deacons who are serving communion will be right here at the table, but they will leave the chancel area, even as the disciples betrayed Jesus. And finally, at the end, my road will be across the pulpit as I exit, because we have to remember that all but a young boy deserted Jesus at his darkest hour. The word mandi comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means mandate. The early Christian church felt that its leaders, its priests, its bishops, had a mandate from Jesus Christ to wash the feet of the people on this day. Now, we will not have a foot washing tonight, but I think it's important for us to come to the table humble, beseeching the Lord to commune with us by the Spirit. And it is not inappropriate for a sense of dread and sorrow and grief to begin to fill our hearts as we find Monday, Thursday, leading to Good Friday. For communion tonight, there will be elders at two stations, and you will be invited to come forward. Those in these two sections, please come to the two elders here, The elder with the bread will be on my left and your right. Partake of the bread first while facing the elder or deacon. And then move to the cup. We are not in a hurry. We're not trying to see how fast Lafayette can serve communion. Please take a moment. Look into the eyes of the one serving you. Count yourself blessed to be playing the role tonight of Christ's disciples, even as we are. And there will be two others over here, same thing with the bread and the cup. And when it is time, you all will come and partake from these two elders or deacons. And, of course, if one side or the other were to run out, you may go to the other station. Also, if you are not able or if it's not easy for you to come forward, the elders, when everyone has come forward, will raise a hand looking around. And if any of you need them to come to you, 
just raise your hand. And we do have gluten-free as an option for the bread. I don't know if Jesus had to give this many instructions at the Last <laughs> Supper. But I would ask us now to close our eyes for a moment. Breathe in slowly and deeply. And do the same as we breathe out. Feel the spirit, feel the sense of communion, feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us approach. This is the table of the Lord. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, invites all who trust him, all who call upon his name, to come and share in the feast which he has prepared. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that the elements of the bread and the cup would be for us a means of grace. In other words, we pray that though they are but ordinary implements for food and drink, tonight we are using them for extraordinary purpose. We pray that the presence of your Son, our Savior, by the Spirit would fill each heart. But not only must we feel a sense of communion with you, O Lord. Give us a sense of communion one with another. For we are no longer strangers. We are here as brothers and sisters. Children of God. Siblings, as it were, of your Son. And we pray, Lord, that even though we may not be worthy of your blessings, that you would impress upon our heart the full forgiveness that you purchased on the cross, that we would know that each day is a new opportunity to repent and turn back to you, that each day is a day of hope and possibility. And Lord, even if we descend into the valley of the shadow of death or the garden filled with darkness and shadow, that your plans and purposes can 
cannot be thwarted. The world may believe it has the upper hand, but your light, life, and love shall continue to shine in our hearts and be witnessed through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite the elders and deacons who are serving to come forward. In the upper room, the disciples gathered. There was a meal prepared for them. Some of you may be good and faithful servants, such as the ones unnamed in the Bible, who yet provided for them. What were their hopes? What were their fears? How did they believe this evening would end? Did they think much beyond the next few minutes? Were they already dreading what may come? You may be seated. The bread, the very bread of life, offered in the name of Jesus Christ, the bread which is not only physical sustenance, but spiritual sustenance. for you. The blood of Christ shed for the many for the remission of sin. As you come forward, the elders will hand you each element and then you can partake as you are standing there. When you are through with the cup, just place it back in the tray. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the bread and the cup, your body, your blood, broken and shed for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please come forward. Please come up this aisle and those as well to receive the bread of the cup.
pray that you would intercede with us before our God, that your tender words of forgiveness and mercy would wipe away the darkness of our sin, even cleansing where we pridefully feel we need none. We pray that you would be a blessing in our lives, even as you have been. And we pray that we would reflect that light by being a blessing in our world, in our families, in our church. But not only because we smile as we push a shopping cart. No, Lord, we pray that you would call us to a greater vision of justice and righteousness, that we would be more understanding and accepting of those with other perspectives or with lives that we may not fully understand. We pray that we would be those folks others cherish, that our words would be kind, that we would, as you did in your earthly walk, be as friendly and as engaging and as present with the least in our world as we would strive to be with the best. Lord, we pray for those who could not be here tonight. We pray that your love will surround them, that they might come to see the importance of faith in their lives. We ask this not in a condescending sense, but as a way of reminding ourselves how important is our witness. And we pray for those who would not be here. Lord, we pray that whatever the scales are in their eyes, that you would use us as instruments to remove them. We pray that the impact of Monday Thursday would dwell in our hearts, that we do not transfer our emotions to Easter too quickly. For Lord, Monday Thursday begins to unmask an unfortunate but authentic face of this world. And we pray that we would not only be citizens of this world, but that we would also remember that we are called to be outside of this world as citizens of your kingdom. We pray this prayer in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Joyously, let us receive our Monday, Thursday offer.
we depart from the table. The Spirit is willing. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. The Spirit is willing. Please stand. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me but one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh.
While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them stuck, struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour in the power of darkness. Our Lord.
The hour is at hand. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one and only true God, who Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. The hour is at hand.
as darkness overcomes the earth? Where are those who called themselves disciples? Where are those who were healed or blessed, reconciled, forgiven, even fed? Where are those who said, Lord, no matter what may come, I will stand with you. But this is the hour of darkness. And yet, in the distance, still and quiet, promise of the rising sun. Let us hold on through our grief and tears to that spirit of hope and love. May the grace, peace, love, and mercy of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Abide with you this evening.